Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about vectors and the difference between raster files and vector files using Photoshop. Um, so let's just create a blank document. And we will just go to Art and Illustration. We'll create a 2,000 pixel grid. So we just have a blank white square on which to create. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do two things. I'm going to make two circles, one with the ellipse tool. And we will actually fill this circle. Let's see. We can fill it with pink, or it might be more exciting if we fill it with a gradient overlay. Let's fill it with a little rainbow overlay here. There we go. Um, okay, now I'm going to do another circle. This time I'm going to make the elliptical marquee tool. Hold shift to make sure we get a perfect circle. And let's see, let's fill this one. Make a blank layer. Fill this one with black, and we will also put a gradient overlay on this one as well. And let's take those layer styles and rasterize them. So it's just a blank layer. Okay. So what we're talking about this week is the difference between raster files and vector files. Um, this second layer that I made is a raster file, meaning it's only made up of pixels. It is what we call a bitmap image. Bitmap referring to a map, which is this, um, and bit meaning those little colors that each pixel is. Those all refer to a different alphanumeric code, like the, uh, the hex codes that we've talked about before. Um, so we've got a raster, which is made out of pixels, and we have our vector layer, which is made out of paths and anchor points. It's a mathematically based formula. I'm going to take our vector, we're going to hold shift, and we're going to resize it. Let's actually make it real big. And notice how the gradient overlay updates every time. This looks really ugly, but that's okay. Now let's take our vector file. We will also resize that to be very large. Now let's zoom in and see if we can notice the difference. This one we're looking at right here is the raster file. If you look closely, you'll notice a little bit of pixelation occurring. If we get rid of that one and we look at the vector file, it looks a lot cleaner. That's because a vector file is really is a lossless type of digital image. Um, no matter what you scale it to, how big or how small it is, it's always going to look the exact same. It's never going to be pixelated um, unless you specifically want it to. It's because it's, it's a mathematical formula. It's a path and an anchor point. If you click on paths and apparently wait, you might have to click on that layer, we can see the path that we have right here. Um, the other one, our raster file, is not made of paths. It's only made of pixels. And if we zoom in, we can see those pixels. Now, we will also see pixels if we look at the other image as well. However, the thing that's important to note about the difference between the raster and the vector file is the vector file, even though it is made out of pixels, the reason it, it doesn't look different um, is because the raster file, when we enlarged it, we just made those pixels bigger. When we enlarged the vector file, we only made the path and the anchor points larger, and then it refilled it with new pixels based on the new size that we had resized it to. So Photoshop has a lot of different ways that you can design with vectors. Basically, this whole little section down here are all vector files. Um, Photoshop can handle both vectors and rasters, but they also have a program called Adobe Illustrator, which is dedicated completely to vector-based graphics. Anything you make in Illustrator is automatically a vector file. So what would you use vectors for? That's a good question. Things that you're going to change the size of, like a logo, which might go on a product, it might go on a billboard, it might go on a t-shirt, things that are different, like that are going to be printed in different ways. Um, Generally, people that are making things like logos or a lot of different graphic design elements 
prefer to use Adobe Illustrator over Photoshop. Photoshop can handle vector art, but its, it's usage is a little bit more basic. Um, type is automatically vector uh, files. It's made up of paths and anchor points for type. Um, our shapes down here are also vector files. They are made up of paths and anchor points. And if we look at this, these four little boxes there, those are our anchor points. Um, anytime we make one, we have both the fill and the stroke. The fill is what is inside of your path, and the stroke is what is on the edges. Currently, that little white box with the red line through it means nothing, but if you wanted to make it a color or white or something like that, let's make it, let's make it blue. Um, all you do is click on the color, and then you can change the size. It's currently inside. I'd probably switch mine to outside. Um, you can also change the stroke options over here. We can change the size if we want to. We can make it dotted. We can do all sorts of stuff um, to our stroke. There we go. Um, so that's the ellipse tool. There's the polygon tool. Works the same way. And it automatically keeps the ones that you had there. There's the line tool, which is how you can just make a straight line. Um, and then there's the custom shape tool. Let's get rid of some of these, shall we? If I go to the custom shape tool up here at the top, um, we have all of these options in our options bar. And at the end under shape, there's a little drop down box with a bunch of shapes here. If I don't like any of the ones that are there, I can hit the gear and I can add in additional shapes. We could click talk bubbles, click append, and that adds in a bunch of new um, little speech bubbles there. Let's click on frames, say append, append adds them to it, and we've got a bunch of frames, shapes, append, and then there's a whole bunch of shapes. So if you ever wanted to get a triangle in Photoshop, go to your shape. And there we go. If I didn't like the options that I've created here, let's go back to a line. Let's make it outside. Let's change the color. We'll change the fill to be this gray. Let's change the stroke to be black. And we've got, actually, let's make the stroke red. And let's make the fill black. There we go. And that's how you can make it. Now, this is a vector file. So, of course, it will be high quality no matter what we scale or size it to. We put it exactly in the center right there. Um, if we added type to it, that would also be vectors. Um, and then one of the most important tools in Photoshop is the pen tool. This is technically a vector design tool. This allows you to create your own vector shape. So what I'm doing right now is I am using anchor points to create a path. The anchor points are all of these little boxes and the path is this line that's connecting them. So you normally, whenever you're creating a vector, you want to make sure that it closes. Um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to fill it with the color. The, fill, the color would fill, uh, spill out of your shape. Um, let's say that I made this, but then I didn't like it. There's these tools right here, your path selection tool, which allows you to click and adjust a whole entire path. Uh, and then there's also your direct selection tool, which allows you to click and edit uh, the individual anchor points on a shape that you've created. Every anchor point, by the way, if you've clicked and dragged with it, it gives you these handlebars, which allow you to adjust the curvature of that anchor point. So I'm using the direct selection tool right now to click on these anchor points and to manually adjust this amorphous blob that I'm apparently creating. Now we've got some sort of a bean shape, I think. This one that uh, is not a, doesn't have the handlebars on it, that's because it's the first one I clicked. I should be able to change it if I click on convert point tool I can click and drag to adjust it. Let's get all these notifications gone. Um, and then it's changed into a different one. So we could go back to our direct selection tool and now we can still modify this. Let's do this though. Um, let's, let's try to write out my name. Oh, look, I poked out the layer, but the path is still there because it's not a layer, it's a path. There's my working path. If I wanted to, currently this path is nothing. If I click off of that path, it completely disappears. If I select it, I can see it. Um, what you probably want to do with the path is you could make you could turn it into a selection or you can fill it. Okay, 
So if you have a path, what you can do is you can uh, fill it or you can stroke it. You can do all sorts of things with it. So we've got our path. We've got our layer. Uh, I'm just going to right click and click fill path. We can fill with black, white, or gray a pattern, or I'm just going to click on color and select whatever color I would like, and it will fill the inside of the path. We could also say stroke path. And, oh, this is kind of fun. If you go to your brush tool and modify your brush, let's choose an interesting brush. Let's go to thin bristles. Let's try this. And now, we go back to a, one of these. We'll say stroke path. We will stroke it with the brush tool and say OK, and it will stroke the edges of the path with the brush that you currently have selected. Now you can uh, undo that or adjust it depending on your uh, what you would like. Let's get rid of that layer. Let's go back to our pen tool, and let's delete the path that we had. Delete path. This time I'm just going to write out my name. using the pen tool. Um, each time that I go back to the beginning of a shape, it creates a little shape here. Right now I'm trying to do curves. So I'm clicking and dragging a little bit to create circles. And we always want to go back to the beginning so that we can modify. Now keep in mind we can use the direct selection tool at the end to go back and adjust this. And we're just typing out our name. Okay, um, so we've got our work path right over here. If I wasn't happy with parts of it, which I'm not, I can go to my direct selection tool, zoom in a little bit with control plus, and I can click on what I want to adjust, and I can modify it. So if the circle wasn't circly enough for me, I can adjust it by clicking on it and changing it from there. I can even move these handlebars to adjust that too. The W I feel like I did a pretty good job on. So we can adjust that as well if we wanted to. There we go. Let's make this one a little bit more fun. So we'll put this guy up. Maybe try to make everything on the same little baseline. We can pull out a guideline from the ruler in order to do that. If you don't have your ruler displayed, click View, check Rulers, and you can draw out these little guidelines from the ruler there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're back in Photoshop. We've got our path with our name on it. Uh, all I want for you guys to do for this assignment is to make sure that you take your paths, keep them as vector files. You're going to vector design your name. Um, make sure you uh, add a fill and a stroke for it. If you have issues with it filling it incorrectly, make sure that you set in your options bar, set this little section up here to combine shapes instead of subtract from front shape, uh, and that, that will fix your issue. We'll fill the path with a color. do one little yellow and we will stroke it as well. Let's actually just stroke it using the pencil. And there we go. If we deselect the path, we can kind of see what we've got without the anchor points. If I didn't think that it was stroked enough, we could come back over here. We could select the path with one of our vector shape tools, stroke path again. This time what we're going to do is we're going to stroke it with the brush. I'm going to go back to the brush. I'm going to modify the brush that I've got. We'll make uh, it about seven pixels and we'll make it, I guess we'll leave it black. Um, so now I can go back over here. I can select the path that we're talking about. We'll say stroke path with the brush. We'll say OK, deselect the path, and we can see exactly what we've got. Feel free to um, put a little bit more fun stuff on yours. If you want to, we could go to a gradient. Whoops. 
Oh, we've got that. We did it on our own little layer there. Let's get rid of the white. Magic wand tool, click. And we'll unlock this layer, get rid of the white. There we go. So now we can say gradient overlay and we can overlay with something fun. Um, let's not do black. Let's do a slightly brighter yellow. Let's do a different type of gradient. We'll start off black to white, knock the opacity way up, click inside the gradient tool, and we can modify it here. Do this color yellow to that color yellow. Say OK. We'll throw a stroke back on there. Let's make the stroke black. And there we go. Um, in order to save it, this time we're going to say file, not save or save as. We're going to say file export. We'll say export as. We are going to export at ours as a PNG file this time. And we will just say export all and we will save it where we want it to go as our name. So we made our name using nothing but vector shapes.